Hi, I'm Steve from The Casual Gamers and today we're talking to you about how to play Paranormal Detectives. Paranormal Detectives is a party game not dissimilar to Mysterium and Cluedo. The idea of the game is that one player will play as the ghost, with all other players playing as Paranormal Detectives trying to learn five key details to do with that ghost's death. Those key details are who killed them, why they killed them, where they killed them, how they killed them, and with what weapon they were killed. The first paranormal detective to get all five key details correct wins along with the ghost. So, let's find out how to play. To set the game up, take the game board and put that in the centre of the table. Take these talking board markers and put them next to the talking board. And then make sure that you've got the tarot cards, the hangman's knots and the quill pen sheet next to the board. Then take the ghost meter markers and set them next to the ghost meter. And lastly, take the wound tokens and put them next to the body. Next, decide which player is going to be playing as the ghost. That person takes a random story card, the ghost sheet, all of the tarot cards, and lastly, their three ghost interaction cards. Next, all other players take a character sheet, an investigation sheet, a pen, and all of the interaction cards for that character. Now, an important note. At the bottom left of all of the interaction cards is a group size number. Make sure you get rid of any cards that don't match the group size you're playing with. So, for example, if you're playing with four people, you'll want to remove all of the cards from the deck that say two to three players. Before beginning the game, the ghost takes their story card, reads it quietly to themselves so that they can understand the five key details of their death, and then takes the wound markers and places them on both the gender and the body as shown on the card. They then read the bottom right of the card out loud to the rest of the group to begin the game. So, on to gameplay. First, decide which player will go first. The game suggests that the best way to do that is to ask the group who was scared the most recently. That player will go first. In order to take a turn, you're going to be asking the ghost a question in order to try and understand one of the five key details about their death. When asking that question, you'll be playing one of your interaction cards, which will dictate the method in which the ghost can answer your question. When writing down the answers, Make sure that you do it in secret behind your character sheet so that none of the other players can see what you're writing. There are nine different ways in which the ghost can answer your question based on the interaction cards that you've played. Let's say you're asking the ghost what weapon was used to kill you. Let's go through each of the ways that the ghost can answer that question. Whispers of Shadows allows the ghost to mouth one word to the group. So, if they were killed with a knife, they might go, Tarot cards allow the ghost to play up to three cards from the tarot card deck. They can then place these on the table in any manner that they'd like. So, let's say that I'm trying to tell the person asking me a question that I was killed with a knife. I might search through the deck and find this card that features a blade. I could place that on its own, or I could use two additional cards to obscure the rest of the card so that only that blade is showing. Talking board allows the ghost to place up to five talking board markers on the talking board in order to spell out a word. If I was trying to spell out knife, I'd place the first marker next to Q, K and X because that group features the first letter of the word. However, I can't point specifically at K, rather just the group of letters that the K is featured within. I'd then place the second, third, fourth and fifth markers in N, I, F and E respectively in order to spell out that word. It's then up to the rest of the group to decipher the word that I'm trying to spell. Ghost Touch allows the ghost to draw the answer to your question on your back. They cannot draw words, letters or numbers, only shapes. So if I'm trying to illustrate that I was killed with a knife, I might try and draw the outline of a knife on your back. Haunted Mirror allows the ghost to do a pantomime for a maximum of three seconds silently. For example, Hangman's Knot allows the ghost to rearrange the ropes in order to draw a shape. This cannot be words, letters or numbers. For example, I've created this knife. Ghost Meter allows the ghost to place up to three markers onto the ghost meter to answer a question. Each features a scale. You can place this marker wherever you'd like on the scale to depict various things. First, how small or how big the object is. Here, whether something's light or heavy, slow or fast, good or evil, quiet or loud, cold or hot, young 
or old, and in the last slider you can even demonstrate a colour. Quill pen allows the ghost to draw using the paranormal detective's hand. The player asking the question holds their pen against the quill pen sheet and the ghost will direct their movement by holding onto their wrist and doing the drawing for them. They can only draw shapes, they can't draw words, letters or numbers. And when the pen leaves the sheet, for any reason, the drawing is over. All players get to hear the ghost's responses to the questions that are posed to them. Players then, again in secret, will write down what they think the answers to those questions were on their investigation sheets. After a player has asked a question and played an interaction card, should they wish to, they can guess the five key story details regarding the ghost's death. At this point, should that player get all five details correct, they, alongside the ghost, have won the game. If not, the game continues. Firstly, the ghost will mark down in secret on that player's investigation sheet the number of story details that that detective got correct. They will then write down on their ghost sheet next to that corresponding character the number of details that that character got correct. At this point, as that player didn't correctly guess all five pieces of information, the ghost will also play one of their three ghost interaction cards. These are identical to cards that we've seen before. However, no players will be asking a question at this point. The ghost will simply be giving a clue. The game continues until a player successfully guesses all five key story details. Or, if that doesn't happen, the game ends on one of two conditions. Either once all interaction cards have been used, or once every player has had two guesses at the story. At this point, whoever made the most correct guesses wins the game. If multiple people made the same number of correct guesses, then whoever made those guesses the earliest wins, which is why it's important to keep track of when people made their guesses on the ghost sheet. Paranormal detectives can also be played cooperatively. All of the rules are exactly the same, except as a team, you collectively have two guesses at the story and two guesses only. You either win by correctly guessing all five key story details or lose. And that's Paranormal Detectives. For more how-tos, reviews and playthroughs, follow our channel, The Casual Gamers, and until next time, I'm Steve, I'll see you on the other side.